State Champs Power Play is brought to you by USA Hockey's National Team Development Program. Head to USA Hockey Arena to watch our country's finest live and usahockeyntdp.com for info. Lawrence Tech Hockey, check them out at ltuathletics.com. Pirani's Hockey World, 14 Michigan locations and hockeyworld.com. And the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. Hi and welcome to State Champs Power Play, presented by USA Hockey's National Team Development Program. For the past seven weeks, this has been the show within the show, right? Sean Belizean joining me for one final time as we talk hockey for the remainder of the State Champs Hour. Lauren, it's been a blast getting a chance to do this for the past couple of months. We're hoping next year that we give you a whole half hour as well. Now, listen, if you've enjoyed the show, tell us about it send an email to contact us at statechampsnetwork.com. That's right, lots to get to this week. We've got one more look at the leading candidates for this year's Mr. Hockey Award. We learn about a big hockey event coming to Metro Detroit next year, and we have one final update on the Lawrence Tech hockey season. Well, the backbone of this show is high school hockey, so let's begin with a pair of games from this week on The Breakaway. Play our game, keep it simple, get pucks deep, go to the net, make them earn whatever they're going to get. Don't give it to them. Let's start in the KLAA. A little playoff tune-up took place on Monday between Plymouth and the Northville Mustangs. Stangs in white ranked the fifth best team in Division One. Just a few minutes in, Samuel Bradley to a really wide open Brendan Hicks. He knows what to do with it. Northville up early. Plymouth would then take advantage of a man advantage. Zach Weiner makes a real nice play to control the puck with his stick, able to punch it across the goal line. Game even at ones. More first period action. Three minutes left. Bradley once again doing a nice job distributing the puck. The junior Alex Iafredi through the five hole. Northville back up. We are still not done with first period highlights. Just four seconds to go. Colton Bork in the slot. Shot stop, but Jake Sylvester there to take out the trash. 2-2 game after one. Northville jumped out ahead again early in the second. It appeared the keeper had squeezed the puck on this shot, but it's loose. Mad scramble, and finally the senior Kyle Dan getting the second opportunity, and he makes good. Going into the third, Northville led 3-2. Plymouth got a five-minute major in the third. Mustangs capitalized. Anthony Solak with the deek and the upstairs delivery. Eighth goal on the season. Northville wins it 4-3. Big first-round opener versus Detroit Catholic Central in the Division I playoffs on Monday. Let's head to a Michigan Metro Hockey League matchup as Celine welcomed in the Woodhaven Warriors at the Ann Arbor Ice Cube. Last game of the regular season for both teams, Celine and Gold would get on the board first. This is exactly how you draw it up. Noah Helmer passes to Ethan Pites, who beats the netminder. They added another and led to zip after the opening period of play. More from the gold-clad Hornets, and this is just a pretty goal. Check this out. 21 seconds into the second, Pites with the backhand snipe, Celine up three. The Hornets trying to split the season series with Woodhaven, and on this night, everything falling their way. Jason Raup had a four-point night. Here, the hot potato finds the back of the net. Still in the second period, Pites looking for the hat trick. Looks like this rebound attempt will go, but no, but there is Pites. He finishes a regular season with 23 goals. Celine shuts out Woodhaven 6 to nothing. They open up the postseason against Trenton in the Division II pre-regional semifinal on Tuesday. It's time now for this week's inside look at Lawrence Tech Hockey recruiting. LTU recruiting process is year-round like most uh, schools. It's a pretty intense process. We work well with uh, what we call our prospect day events. We hold three events throughout the year, one in November, one in March, and one in May. So that's uh, kind of a cornerstone of our recruiting process. A process that starts with the players. We look for uh, good people, good citizens, people that will be a good addition to our university. Once we know we've got a good, a genuine uh, individual, we know we can uh, make hockey players out of them. So we really look at the academic side, we look at their, uh, 
their status as a just a young man before we even uh, begin looking at hockey. And is made easy with the LTU brand. We always start with our name, Lawrence Tech University, nationally recognized. And once we start um, informing our recruits just on the benefits of uh, the academics can provide, hockey slips in there as an easy second. It also provides comfort to me as a coach. Kids here playing hockey for me or for the school, we know they're going to be prepared for their career for uh, 30 years uh, post-graduation here at Lawrence Tech. For more information on LTU hockey, head to ltuathletics.com. For Power Play, I'm Stephanie Funkhauser. On Sunday, March 13th, Lawrence Tech is having a prospect day for potential future Blue Devils. It will be taking place at the Southfield Ice Arena, and it gives an opportunity for high school players to perhaps live the dream of playing college hockey. For more information, visit the LTU Athletics website and reach out to the coaches. There is a serious push for the NAIA to introduce hockey nationally. When it happens, it's a game changer. So if you want to play college hockey, Lawrence Tech's Prospect Day, March 13th, might be your best chance. Power Play will be back in just a moment. USA Hockey has found its new home in Plymouth, Michigan. Take pride in the red, white, and blue and put on your jersey in support of Team USA. Team USA, building champions. We want you. We are Lawrence Technological University, and we don't want just anybody. We want students who are curious and driven Students with a passion for hard work and good times. Students who will move right in and shoot for the best that Lawrence Tech Southfield campus has to offer. So if you believe that everything is possible and that possible is everything, we want you at LTU. Pirani's Hockey World is your complete source for everything hockey. From team warm-ups to coaching apparel and travel bags, Pirani's has the largest selection of team uniforms, sticks, skates, gloves, and pads from all the premier brands with the best customer service in the business. Experience the Pirani's difference that made us the official retailer of Little Caesars Amateur Sports and the Detroit Red Wings. Stop into one of Pirani's 22 locations nationwide or shop online at HockeyWorld.com. Welcome back. It has been phenomenal getting a chance to team up with USA Hockey's National Team Development Program here on the Power Play. If you haven't had a chance to see either the U-17s or the U-18s in action, do yourself a favor and get out to support the Red, White, and Blue. There was a big announcement made recently, and we were there. Sean Belisian has a story. USA Hockey had a big week with the announcement that the 2017 International Ice Hockey Federation Women's World Championship will be hosted in Plymouth at the USA Hockey Arena. As Reagan Carey, USA Director of Women's Hockey explains, it is quite the honor. We've only had the opportunity to host this three other times in the history of women's hockey here with USA Hockey. So for us to be able to, to name that we're not only hosting, but to host it here in Plymouth at the USA Hockey Arena, that's something special and uh, I know it's something that we're really excited about and can't wait to get started. The tournament is tentatively scheduled for April 1st through the 8th, 2017. Jim Johansson explains, it's great for USA Hockey as a whole and our area. I think number one in this community, I think it helps kind of cement USA um, here, both USA Hockey Arena, but also our, our players that are in the community. And then, and then I think secondly is showcasing everything that we want that's great in our sport. Well, the overall growth of the game, in particular on the women's side, and the newly renovated USA Hockey Arena make this a perfect spot for this event. It's, it's an awesome spot and a lot of progress, so I've heard, in the last few months, so uh, we can't wait to bring it here. For Power Play, I'm Sean Belegian. Hi, everybody. I'm Pete Krapsky. Let's go to the highlights of the U.S. Under-17 team as they take on the Muskegon Lumberjacks in USHL action. We pick up the game in the second period with the under-17 team down 2 to nothing. Check out the hard work of Logan Cockrell. He buries home a rebound to trim the deficit to 2-1. to one. 
We go to the third period with the USA down 4-1. They got back into it late as Tommy Miller scores through traffic to make it 4-2. But USA would go down to lose 5-2 to Muskegon. Let's go to the action on Thursday at USA Hockey Arena as the under-17 team takes on the Bloomington Thunder. We jump all the way to the third period with the game still scoreless. Bloomington had a chance here, but Logan Lambden is stopped by USA goaltender Adam Shield. In all, he had 27 saves in the game. The under-17 team had chances as well. Jacob Tortora with the steal, and he gives it to wide open Sean Doogie, but Doogie is denied by Bloomington goaltender Hayden Levine. The U.S. with another chance a few minutes later, shorthanded as Brady Kachuk is on a breakaway, and he goes for the slapper, but Levine closes the five hole. We go into overtime, still scoreless, but not uneventful. Bloomington gets the disputed game winner in the extra session as Wade Kalniuk goes wide and snaps it through traffic. Bloomington beats the U.S. team one to nothing. For Power Play, I'm Pete Krupski reporting. Sean now in studio with me as we get to talk one more time about this year's Mr. Hockey Race. On your screen now is the current list of candidates in the running to win the annual award to the top hockey player in the state. Sean wants to talk about a couple of them in particular. So many great players in the state and we haven't had a chance to talk about these two. Let's start with the defending Division II champions, Brother Rice, Nick Bowman, a co-captain, as we mentioned, a loaded team, a team looking to repeat as well. Bowman has led the way with a very balanced squad. Franklin, they've been making some noise in Division II as well. Lots of good hockey being played in Livonia. Chase Wallace was paired with Brendan Whitney. Those two put on a show this year. How about Wallace? Well over two points a game. Franklin is going to be a dangerous team for anybody come D2 playoffs. All right, thank you, Sean. We are very excited. And as we get back to the highlights, let's first take a look at the winners of the statewide high school hockey players of the week. Welcome to the hat trick portion of the show and East Kentwood gets us started by hosting Muskegon Reese Puffer, both teams looking to get into gear as the regional playoffs are right around the corner. We were scoreless early in the first, East Kentwood on the power play looking to change that. Junior forward Alex Pazic from the outside with a slap shot, it doesn't go but somehow the senior Bronson Foot taps it past the goalie and EK takes the early 1-0 lead. Reese Puffer would attempt to fight back with a little offensive pressure of their own. The puck is loose and forward Trevor Fowler picks it up, sending it to Logan Homfeld in front of the zone. He finds the back of the net and evens the score. Both teams playing aggressive in this one. EK coming up with possession. It's Abel Christians down the ice, making the move, getting it past the goalie and he lights the lamp. Reese Puffer fighting back once again, down by a goal in the first. The Rockets get it, and Trevor Fowler gets the pass for the equalizer, and these two go into the second all tied up. It would come down to the wire. Puffer trying to get the puck out. It's intercepted by Brendan Aron, and he gets the goal to go. East Kentwood would maintain the lead, and they win this matchup 6-5 to five over Muskegon Reese Puffer. Next, we head to a matchup between Big Rapids and Portage Central. And before this game, the MHSAA and both teams held a moment of silence to acknowledge the victims and the families of the Kalamazoo mass shootings. Scoreless in the first period, that's where we begin. James Hunter's march, taking the puck, sending it over to River Spadowski for the first goal of the game, and the Cardinals are on top early. Portage Central didn't score in the first. They tried to bounce back in the second on the power play. This is Max Moans slipping to the left. He gets one-on-one -on -one and wins that matchup, and that ties up the game. To the third period, Big Rapids trying to find the opening on their power play. Drew Wada swings it around on the left of the zone with the move. He gets open for the goal, and that gives the Cardinals a 2-1 to lead. Later in the third, Big Rapids trying to take advantage of their power plays. The first shot doesn't go. 
Rebound to center Christian Canati. His slapper can't get in, but off the rebound, it's Garrett Dom banging home the insurance goal. That one would come in handy as PC would get another score, but it wasn't enough as Big Rapids downs Portage Central by a final of 3-2. That's all for the hat trick. I'm Ryan Terpstra. So that's it. Not only is the state champs hour officially retired for now, but state champs power play has also seen its inaugural season come to a close. We send out a big thank you to everyone with the USA Hockey's National Team Development Program, Lawrence Tech Hockey, Pirani's Hockey World, and of course our friends with the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. Now just because this show's done, the hockey playoffs are just getting started. And for all the stats and news and Sean's podcast, go to the Michigan High School Hockey Hub, M-I-H-S Hockey Hub. And of course, state champs will have the only coverage of the state tournament on TV with matchups like Detroit Catholic Central taking on Northville to open the playoffs. You have to tune in next week at 9 a.m. All right, well, thank you, Sean, and thank you at home for watching. State Champs is back next week.